It's been another big week in the world of Microsoft Flight Simulator. We have a bunch of product announcements and some new aircraft that have been released. So uh, let's jump into this week's video. Welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator update video. This is where we bring you each and every week all the important news and updates and the development of this new flight sim in a one weekly video. Now, 75% of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, so if you could help us out by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell, that would be much appreciated. This way that we can let you know when all the important flight sim cool stuff is released or announced. DC Designs kicked off this week's previews announcement, showcasing some screenshots of the Concord within Microsoft Flight Simulator this week. DC Designs mentioned that the conversion from Prepare 3D is currently ongoing. It has been for some time now. Many of the uh, animations are already working and many features have been coded from Prepare 3D have already carried across into Microsoft Flight Simulator, which gives the team a bit of a head start. No ETA on date, of course, when the release will be of the Concorde, but we'll keep you posted of more Concorde developments. Moving on to the next preview, and this one goes to the team at Orbex with Essendon Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator. As part of the birthday celebrations for the airport, it has a lot of history, including being the main airport for Melbourne uh, many, many years ago, but was taken over years later by Melbourne International Airport. This airport still has a lot of history. Orbex has paid close attention to detail, including their own Orbex office, which they have developed and included in the package. Some of the features include PBR texturing throughout custom and Ground poly, crisp uh, ortho imaging, and animated uh, cross gate, and more. No ETA of when this will be released, but knowing Orbex, if they're showcasing it now, it should be out within days. The next announcement for the week goes to the team at Milvis as they announce the A1H Skyraider, or known as the Douglas A1 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Milvis has been punching out announcements of up and coming projects of late, and this time it is the Douglas A1. The Douglas A1 first flew in 1946 with over 3,000 built over the years. No exterior shots at this stage, only a couple of cockpit shots, but of course we will keep you posted and a close eye on development for future updates. Moving on to this week's releases, and the first one is a aircraft release, and it's by the team at BR Sim Designs releasing their Debonair 35 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The 35 is a high-performance light aircraft introduced in 1968 by Beach Aircraft. It was powered by a 225 horsepower engine, and only 16 of these were built um, over the years. Features include in the package eight liveries, high detailed 3D modeling in and out, 4K textures with PBR, all the switches, knobs, levers, and handlers work in the cockpit. Study elements have been included such as wheel chocks, pitot uh, heat cover and engine cover. Extra wing tip tanks have been included and it also has a fuel transfer system. Sim, uh, there is some sim default uh, products included in the sim such as the GPS, the transponder, the autopilot, the radio panel, the CDI and the ADF is all default from the sim. You can pick up your copy of the BR Sim Designs Debonair 35 directly from the sim market store. I'll leave a link in the description below. The next release for the week goes to the well-known developer Driz Wecky, if I said that correctly, Designs. Uh, they've released a Lubend Airport for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This rendition of the airport includes high quality model featuring the up-to-date version of the airport. It is FPS friendly design, has high definition mesh including the exact run profiles. Lubin City landmarks have all been included in the local area and a couple of local airports which is Echo Papa Sierra Lima and Echo Papa Sierra Whiskey. You can pick up your copy of the Driz Lecky, if I said that correctly, again designs Lubin Airport directly from the Sim Market Store. I'll leave a link in the description below. Aerosoft this week uh, dropped a, a bit of a teaser of their up and coming Antarctica Volume 1 package, and now the scenery is released. This scenery will add numerous uh, things like icebergs, ships, ports, and other unique objects to the area. It's focused around the Rothera area and beyond. Uh, you should expect to see things like people having snowball fights, penguins, animated trucks, snowmobiles, all that sort of stuff. It really gives us a reason um, to go and check out this region of the globe where we probably haven't spent too much time. You can pick up your copy of Aerosoft's Antarctica Volume 1, which means I'm assuming there's going to be a Volume 2 later down the track, directly from the uh, Aerosoft store. I'll leave a link in the description below. 
Milvis is in the news again, and this time it's for a release of an aircraft, which is the PC6 Turbo Porter for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The Turbo Porter first flew in 1964, and its production only ended just recently in 2019. The Turbo Porter is a very highly capable aircraft, all that are using from utilities such as skydiving, search and rescue, and military, all used around the world. Features included in this package is a high res resolution interior and exterior models with PBR, detail animations, cockpit doors, cockpit uh, cabin doors, storm windows, trap doors, uh, windshields, blinds, and more. Um, on the outside, you've got chocks, uh, tie downs, covers that used uh, in the startup and shutdown procedures, two distinct cabin configurations, uh, wheels or skis included, um, which can be swapped using the onboard EFB, a fully interactive checklist, and heaps more features to list. You can pick up your copy of the PC6 Turbo Porter uh, from the, the Milvey store. I'll leave a link in the description below. Moving on to this week's development news and this week we received an updated development roadmap and from the looks of things the JU-52 which is the first of local legends that was delayed is still on track for release next week on the 28th of September followed by a very anticipated again de uh, delayed development Q&A which will follow through on the 29th. Sim update 6 has now been scheduled for the 21st of October including an update trailer around about the same time of an upcoming Reno Air Races D DLC, a bit of a promo to get everybody excited about and speaking of arena air races from the looks of things we'll see that the DLC has taken over the Maverick release date and we should see it release around about mid November plus there should be a sim update that will go along with that and we're assuming that's because that's using the new tech so we can have wing to wing racing no development um, information when it comes around to a uh, December but from the looks of things and what we saw last year the development um, updates in December are going to be pretty slow and we should expect a slow month anyway ways. Last week we took a look at the top 25 features um, that may or may not hit the sim before the end of the year. This week we're going to take a look at the other top 25 or the ones that are worth mentioning anyway that may or may not make it. The first one is the uh, flyby view and also the tower view that is still in a progress and we may see a release this year so it hasn't skipped back to 2022 yet. A uh, freeware category for the marketplace may make the sim before the end of the year. A render uh, vegetation render scale um, is still on the cards for 2021 also and a node based particles now there's something going on with the SDK that we may see some sort of uh, things introduced with particles in the next sim update so stay tuned for that one and also the introduction to old events such as the Jap Japan tour and also the Halloween uh, special we may see that sort of stuff hit the sim before uh, the end of the year other features have been pushed back which has been a lot of them to 2022 and there was a few others there but not really worth mentioning with the odds of only having a one sim update left before the end of the year it's hard to think we'll see a much when it comes to big development um, before the year is out except for the Reno um, air races expansion but hey we'll keep our fingers crossed third party marketplace this week we have seen 10 new airports two new aircraft which we mentioned in the video already and seven new sceneries and one mission pack as for the marketplace it's a little bit like last week we've seen 10 new releases but only one of those are a brand new product the rest of them are basically release products that are now just been adding to the xbox which is great for xbox users but not really many new products if you got this far in the video, thank you very much. You guys are a bunch of legends and as part of your pre-flight checks, please hit that like button. And if you enjoyed the video and you're not subscribed, only 75% of viewers are, uh, to the Ausflight Simulator channel are actually subscribed. So if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, that way we can let you know when our next video is live. That would be much appreciated. We also stream every Wednesday and Sunday at 8 p.m. at GMT plus 10. Feel free to drop by. All uh, Xbox users and PC users are all Welcome to joining in the multiplayer shenanigans. We're going to leave you with one of our other favorite videos here. Feel free to check that one out and I'll see you over there.